Hi everyone. I've been asked several times about how to use the multi-categorical option in uh, Andrew Hayes process macro. And so what I thought I would do is to put together a presentation demonstrating its use in the context of moderated multiple regression. So for this demonstration I'm going to focus on one uh, circumstance where you might use this and that is where you have a uh, continuous focal independent variable and a categorical moderator variable. Um, now before we get started let me note first that if you would like to obtain a copy of the SPSS data file that I'm using in this presentation you can follow the link underneath the video description. Uh, second, uh, underneath the video description you will find a link to a PowerPoint and that PowerPoint is going to provide a lot more detail than I'm going to be covering in this video. So the video is mainly going to focus in on the procedural aspects of using this option and running your analysis uh, and maybe perhaps uh, providing sort of a bird's eye view if you will of the results but the PowerPoint gives you a deeper dive on that. Um, additionally the PowerPoint includes a couple of appendices that show you uh, circumstances where you might be using the multi-categorical option um, in situations where you have a categorical um, focal independent variable and a continuous moderator or where you have essentially categorical uh, focal independent variable and moderator which is pretty much analogous to running a factorial ANOVA. So let's go ahead and get started with our demonstration and um, before I actually open up SPSS and start running it I'd like to cover the basic model and uh, setup. So uh, the model that we are going to be testing uh, is based on participant responses to items from a uh, personality disorder scale from the International Personality Item Pool and we're going to be using uh, scale scores for affective lability um, and depression and then we also have uh, an anxiety level variable that essentially I've trichotomized uh, that subscale into three groups basically reflecting a low medium and high group and uh, I would ordinarily not recommend you do this, but I wanted to demonstrate the uh, categorical option. So um, instead of treating the anxiety subscale as being continuous, I just created a, uh, an ordered categorical variable for this demonstration. So at any rate, in this uh, demonstration, we have affective lability predicting depression and then anxiety level uh, being treated as um, a categorical moderator of that effect. Now when we open up SPSS and, and uh, process, basically we do this by going through the Analyze Regression menu all the way to Process 3.5 by Andrew Hayes, that's the most recent version. Uh, on the right you see the, the main screen open up. We've set the model number uh, at 1, that's actually the default so there was no real uh, changing anything. We've moved the uh, dependent variable uh, depressive traits to the Y variable box, the affective lability variable to the X box, and then our moderator, our ordered categorical uh, variable is now moved down to the moderator variable W box. Um, now next what we're going to do is we're going to click on the multi-categorical tab and when we do this this box opens up and you have three options you can uh, set the variable X that's your focal uh, independent variable um, or your variable W that's um, one of, that's a um, moderator variable. Um, again, you have the option if it's multi-categorical to select this. And then there's variable Z um, in certain cases. We're going to keep this really simple and focus in on just a single um, categorical moderator, which is our anxiety level variable. So we're not selecting uh, variable X because it's continuous. Um, we are only selecting variable W because it is uh, a categorical variable. Now the coding system is a little, uh, there's a little drop down for that and I'm going to leave it on indicator because uh, I tend to prefer using uh, more of a standard dummy coding system. So in this case with our moderator variable anxiety level uh, the original variable is set up to, to have categories of 1, 2, or 3, 1 reflecting low anxiety, uh, 2 reflecting medium anxiety, and then 3 representing high anxiety. So the way that this coding system is set up, what will happen is, uh, as indicator, what will happen is, is that the low anxiety group will be treated as the reference category. Next, um, 
when I click through uh, into options, I'm going to select generate code for visualizing interactions. You'll see that I've selected under mean center for construction of products, I've selected only continuous variables that define products. There's only one continuous variable uh, that's included in our product terms in this uh, analysis, and that is our affective lability variable. So what's going to happen is is that the program will mean center affective lability. Then down below you can see that we have uh, conditioning values of one standard deviation below the mean, at the mean, and one standard deviation above the mean. And that will be relevant later on when we're uh, plotting and plotting our um, our simple slopes. So at any rate, uh, now let's go ahead and open up SPSS and run our analysis with the process macro. Okay, so here we have um, SPSS opened up and uh, what, what I'm going to do, you'll see right here really quickly, there's our anxiety, that's the original uh, scale scores for anxiety, there's depression, there's affective lability, um, and then I've actually added in several additional variables, um, but we're not going to go through those in this particular demonstration, but we have our anxiety level variable right here that we're going to be working from, so that's our ordered categorical variable. So we will go to analyze regression, we will go down to uh, process 3.5 and uh, again our model number uh, we're just going to leave it set at 1. We're going to move depressive traits over to the y variable box, affective lability to the x variable box, and then we're going to move our, um, our anxiety level variable to the moderator box. Next, we will go under multi-categorical and select multi-categorical here. Here's the drop down I was telling you about, and we're just going to stick with the indicator approach. We will uh, select continue, and then under options, uh, I will select generate code for visualizing interactions. I'm going to select um, uh, this option under mean centering for a continuous variable, and then I'm also going to select down here under conditioning values, uh, the one standard deviation uh, below the mean at the mean and one standard deviation above and we'll click on continue and then uh, on OK and so as we're doing this it takes a couple of seconds to um, run but there you go there's our output okay so the first thing that you're gonna see in the output is the uh, discussion about our uh, presentation of the coding system so you can see right here we've got a W1 variable that's uh, and a W2 variable so the original anxiety level variable that was coded as 1, 2, or 3, it's recoded into two dummy variables, w, W1 and W2, and the, ref, the uh, uh, low anxiety group is coded 0 across these two dummy variables. So that's our reference category. Uh, you'll see that on uh, for uh, the second level of anxiety, the medium anxiety group, they're coded 1 on W1 and 0 on W2, and then the third uh, group, the high anxiety group, is coded 0 on W1 and 1 on W2. If we scroll down uh, a little bit further, now you can see that we have our regression results. Um, our outcome variable is depression. You'll see that we have our R-square value that's given right here. Um, our F value and then our, uh, our degrees of freedom followed by our P value that's given right here. So you can see the R square value is 0 0.4063. So um, we would uh, interpret this to mean that the predictors in the model are accounting for roughly 40.6% of the variation and you can see that it's statistically significant. Then you can see where we've got the constant. This is the intercept for the model. And one of the main reasons why I selected that uh, mean centering option is to um, help to facilitate interpretation of the intercept. So what this means is when we're looking at this coefficient within this model, because the affective lability variable has been centered at, at its mean, then, that, then uh, the coefficient is informed by the mean of that variable. Remember too that the intercept in any model is going to be the predicted value on y or the conditional mean on y when your x's are zero. So if w1 and w2 are both zero, that is referring to um, our low anxiety group. So the intercept for this is going to be interpreted as uh, essentially the mean depressive trait score for persons who are low in anxiety and who are also falling at the mean on the affective lability variable. 
then you can see for W1 the regression coefficient here and, the, and W2 the regression coefficient here and these are reflecting the differences between each of our group means and um, our, our medium and high groups versus the low group uh, again for persons who are falling at the mean on the affective lability variable so uh, this first comparison between the low uh, between uh, the medium group and the low group um, that's the uh, difference in means for that regression coefficient that's that's what it means and you can see there's a significant difference and then between our high anxiety and low anxiety group that difference in means is uh, also statistically significant then down below you can see that we have uh, INT1 and INT2 these are the interactions and if you look down below you see uh, the product terms key which is really handy um, so you can see for INT1 that's uh, or the interaction one that's affective lability by W1 and then INT2 is affective lability uh, times the second dummy variable that you see right there so basically in this particular case um, you know, right here you can see that we have uh, affective lability um, at 0 0.3025, and what this is is this is going to be the uh, this is a conditional slope, if you will. So that is our conditional effect, and that is the relationship between affective lability and um, and deep and uh, depressive traits for individuals who are essentially in the low. Uh, anxiety group. So these slopes that you see down here, these are these represent changes in slopes um, uh, across the groups. So INT1, basically this would be uh, the slope is reflecting the change uh, in the uh, relationship between depression, between uh, affective lability and depression. Um, as you move from individuals in the low group to the medium group and then you have uh, this next uh, slope right here which is reflecting the change um, uh, from the low group to the high group so this is the change in slopes there and you can see that the first interaction term is statistically significant the second one is not if you scroll down a little bit further you can also see that we have sort of an omnibus test of the interaction effect so um, right here the interaction effect is sort of distributed across these two um, interaction uh, term effects that are included in the regression model um, but down here you've got this R square change uh, you've got an F test uh, and there's our PVA right there and this is summarizing the overall interaction effect so you can see that the overall interaction is statistically significant as we scroll down a little bit further you can see that we have the conditional effects of the focal predictor uh, at values of the moderator so our, our levels of our moderator are one two and three representing the low medium and high anxiety groups you can see for the low group for the first effect it's 0 0.3025 and that's exactly the same value that we saw in our table up here uh, above point three zero two five so again um, that first um, conditional effect um, that you see in the table below is representing the relationship between um, between affective lability and depressive uh, traits for persons in the low anxiety group then you can see that we have for the second group it's 0.5891 that's the conditional effect there and that's just simply computed as I was kind of indicating above that would be computed by taking the slope for the low group and then adding the change in the slope um, from the uh, from the low to the medium group so if I sum those two values together that's what gets me the uh, conditional effect for group two and then the conditional effect for group three is just simply summing um, our slope above uh, right here for group one and the change in the slope from group one to group three which is um, that coefficient for the second interaction term so you can see then that as we're looking at this that uh, the p-values are all indicating statistical significance all of the slopes are positive uh, but you'll notice that for slope uh, for the slope for uh, the medium anxiety group that's more pronounced than it is for the low and the high groups so it doesn't look like there's a, a constant um, sort of um, 
relationship between affective lability and depressive traits across our groups. Okay, so next we have uh, in our output some syntax, and this allows us to plot out our simple slopes. So you can double click in this box and then highlight all of this from data list free all the way down to the period in the last line. And I'm going to copy this, and then I'm going to go to File, New, and then go to uh, Syntax right here and paste that in. And when I highlight all of this and run it, you'll see that I get sort of um, a loose plot right here. You see the plot um, of the uh, of the simple slopes, but you don't really see the lines drawn through there. And I, I've not found a way of generating lines automatically through this route. So another route, one of the nice things is, is that um, when you run the syntax, it's going to create a new file um, essentially with the uh, conditional means at different levels of our two variables. So you'll notice uh, in the um, table right here, you've got anxiety level. This is group one, group two, and then group three. And then you've got affective lability. This is one standard deviation below the mean, at the mean, and above the mean. So basically, you've got those three points on affective lability within each of our groups. And so then we've got our um, our uh, conditional means on depression that, that we can uh, use to create our graph. So to do this what we'll do is go up to graphs legacy dialog and then uh, click on line uh, so, uh, then we'll click on multiple define and we will click other statistic and then I'm just going to move the depressed variable over and we'll, we will move the affective lability variable to the category axis box and anxiety level uh, variable to the uh, define lines box and then click on OK and so now we have our plot of simple slopes so you can see uh, that basically the most pronounced relationship they're all positive relationships between affective lability and depression or depressive traits but clearly the strongest relationship is found in the medium anxiety group which is what we saw before when we were looking at those uh, conditional effects um, based on those simple slopes um, analysis. So that uh, pretty well concludes this video demonstration and thanks for watching.